Um, it, it came about in the aftermath of the um, EU referendum in the UK, and it was just a spontaneous uh, initiative by a number of um, EU citizens in Bristol, actually, that organised a meeting after the referendum and decided that it was time to take action. And, uh, and then it just grew organically. It's grown organically over the last few months. And, and we've, we've pulled in, it's sort of snowballed. We've uh, set up a forum on Facebook, which now has over 35,000 uh, on it. We uh, send newsletters. And we, the, the unique thing about our campaign is that we have um, teamed up with uh, a similar pressure group of British people living in Europe called the British in Europe. Uh, uh, who we've been collaborating with. And so we're running a joint campaign, basically. Yes, well, it's, it, I thought it was uh, very nice of her to write to us, but I wonder whether we were actually the um, genuine recipients of the letter or whether the letter was actually addressed to the EU heads of state that she has now gone to meet tonight. So that would be my first thought. Uh, it's obvious that she wants to be heard, um, but I, it's not clear to me whether she's actually heard us, particularly on the settled status proposal for EU nationals. Um, we have been uh, we we've been engaging with the European Union, uh, with the European Parliament, with the European Council, uh, with the European. We met Michel Barnier uh, on the twenty eighth of March, the day before Article fifty was triggered, and we have been briefed by um, some officials in um, junior ministers in the Home Office and uh, the Department for Exiting the EU, but. We haven't had the same level of engagement uh, with um, senior members of the UK government. So um, we feel that we're not being heard, certainly not on the substance of the policy. Uh, and it's actually quite demeaning that, that Theresa May is now wanting us to act as, as human guinea pigs to test the systems uh, rather than hearing what we have to say about what's wrong with the settled status proposal. So I think. What we need are words. What we need. What we need are actions rather than than words. And and the clock is ticking, as as Michel Barnier keeps reminding us. Uh, and and I'm afraid that we haven't really seen actions. Well, uh, she could agree with the European Union to safeguard all our rights because at the moment it's it's almost like it's a rights lotto and and our our rights like to um, family reunification or right of uh, uh, return to the UK after a period uh, over two years for us EU nationals in the, uh, in the UK or freedom of movement for um, uh, Brits living in Europe they're all up for grabs and and uh, and it's it's it's, it's not the one these shouldn't actually be up for negotiation so I think that the EUK Theresa May David Davis and the negotiators um, should collaborate with the EU to put people before politics we've been pawns in a in a political game of chess for over 15 months which is ridiculous Well, it doesn't. It's a far lesser offer than what the EU uh, put on the table back in uh, April. So uh, the UK came up with the offer of settled status in June, and it's basically offering us a, a far lesser status with the rights that I mentioned earlier uh, not being guaranteed at all. Uh, and it um, it puts us under the UK immigration system. Uh, at the women office, which, as I'm sure you know, is, is certainly not the most reliable uh, department uh, in the UK government. And there have been instances of, of very serious deportation letters being sent to EU nationals. So we wouldn't have a right to appeal. Um, and if 
our application to settle status is rejected for, for any reason, then um, our life would be turned into a living hell, as, as it is for many non-EU nationals currently. Basically, the system is just not fit for purpose, and, and nobody should be subjected to that business, let alone a, an additional three million citizens who are already resident in the UK, or even future EU nationals. Well, the worst case scenario is that there is no deal at all, uh, because then we would certainly be stuck with settled status, or, or perhaps even even less than that. Uh, and uh, we've already seen what, what they're doing to many uh, thousands of Europeans that have left the country. Um, I, for instance, I'm considering after 22 years of living in the UK, and and all my three children were all born in the UK. So to them, going home is just not something that they can understand because home is here. We are seriously considering leaving, leaving the country. So it's, it's heartbreaking. I think that's something that, uh, that goes case by case. Um, uh, many people don't have an option because they've lived here for most of their life. They don't have families in, in their countries of origin. Uh, there is a lot of elderly people, a lot of um, uh, vulnerable, vulnerable people um, who simply don't have, have an option. For, for, for us, personally, I suppose it might be going back to, to Italy, where I haven't lived since I was 18, so, uh, and where my children have never lived so it would be quite a radical departure i'd have to uproot my family we are uh, we keep on pushing uh, we're not going anywhere uh, we um we take it on the chin each time and we uh, and we just keep at it um we are self-sustaining we're all volunteers and we work as i said side by side with the british in europe who have very problems to us their situation mirrors ours so we will just continue we need to have a deal by christmas basically before the uh before the negotiations then move on to phase two this was meant to be the easy part of the negotiations negotiations and it's turned out not to be at all because there doesn't seem to be the political will on either side to be honest to really put people before politics and uh, and and we need this political will to be leveraged before christmas before we then move on to a phase two where citizens rights can be discussed uh, in a much wider pool of other issues so if there hasn't been the political will to solve the issues now there certainly won't be political will to solve them after christmas <laughs>